which is the first book that you should start reading to learn general theory of relativity? Among the hundreds and thousands of books available, which is the right book to select? Do you need to learn a lot of mathematics for studying general relativity? Is there any easy way out? Well, in this video, I would be talking about the very first book which you should select about to learn general theory of relativity, also what to learn, how to learn and most importantly, how much mathematics do you actually need to learn general theory of relativity. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to this very new fresh lesson which is the first book to start learning general relativity. Before we go ahead about talking about this specific book, I would quickly write to watch the topics that we are covering today. First of all, I would like to give you a glimpse that is it all about relativity or something else? What is the general study approach to learn relativity? The problem with the books of general relativity in general available? Which book to start with? What is very special that I am talking about this book? The arrangement of the book? The content of the book? My honest review? And how you can get this book? Uh, these are the topics that I would be talking and give you a clean, detailed idea about the very specific book, the first book that you should start with. Now, the question is that when we talk about relativity, in general theory of relativity, is it all about relativity in general or general theory of relativity speaks something else? Let us look up in the next part of our video. Is it all about relativity? Well, when we start talking about Einstein's general theory of relativity, what happens is that general relativity is also known as the general theory of relativity and Einstein's theory of gravity. It is the geometric theory of gravity published by Albert Einstein in 1915 and with others and the current description of gravitation in modern physics. General relativity actually generalizes special relativity and refines Newton's law of universal gravitation, providing a unified description of gravity as a geometry geometric property of space and time or four dimensional space time. In particular, the curvature of space time is directly related to the energy and momentum of whatever matter and radiation are present. The relation is specified by the Einstein field equations, a system of second order partial differential equations. As you see in this pictorial description, I have just given how it generalizes from the straight lines, we move to geodesics, from Newton's F equals to MA, we move into curved space time and then black holes. So the time and space which was quite different uh, during the Newtonian era got into one specific uh, identity which is called space time. This is on the right hand side you can see is the description of Einstein's field equation which is generalized and contains stress energy momentum tensor and this gives rise to cosmology, black holes, um, gravitational time duration and various other things. This is just a kind of a pictorial description how the generalization after the publishing of general theory of relativity from the Newton's uh, gravitational law gets into curvature of space time further into white dwarf black hole and the identity of space and time is unified into one which is called space time. Well, what I would like to tell you is that you see that Newtonian classical mechanics which comprises of momentum, velocity, force, energy, vector, mass and motion acceleration which are the basic, I would say, the components of Newtonian or classical mechanics, they get generalized into special theory of relativity and special theory of relativity further gets generalized into general theory of relativity. So, it is actually a process of generalization which happens. So, the special theory of relativity actually talks about inertial frame of reference. We know it deals with speed and velocity. It is definitely experimentally provable and it talks of frames of reference which are in inertial frame of reference. That means those which are not accelerating. 
where you, if you look into general theory of relativity, it basically talks about non-inertial frames of reference. It takes gravity, but not as gravity as a fictitious force, but something as a curvature of space-time. And it is actually speaks of geometry of space-time, and it is much more applicable on a very, very, very larger scale, or we would say astronomical scale. Now, the basic idea is that why I'm trying to tell all those is that you see that special theory of relativity is basically a study of relativity and simultaneity. That means it takes speed, time and space and it studies actually relativity and simultaneity while general theory of relativity is more of the study of geometry. It studies the surfaces and curvatures and manifolds and which includes a lot of complex mathematics like differential geometry, etc. So before we start and go ahead into the book, I just thought to give you a basic idea and to clear up one notion that general theory of relativity is less about relativity and more about curvature of space-time. I would say the geometry of space-time and that is why the mathematics is totally different compared to that of relativity because it doesn't deal with speed, time and space, but deals with curvatures, manifolds, surfaces and further things. So that is what general theory of all is all about, more of curvature, less than of relativity. Okay, having told about the basic difference between special and general relativity, we would like to now explore that what is the general approach or how do we study or generally approach general relativity coming up into the next part of our video. So when we talk about the study approach, you understand in generally, in general, what comes to your mind is, oh my goodness, general relativity is all about difficult mathematics, tensor calculus. Definitely it is all about, but there is a different way to study. Now, if I take one approach, which goes in this direction, which I call as an intuitive approach and which is very dangerous for anybody who is starting to read, we will see that there are misconceptions uh, which arises there will be, uh, we, you, you won't be able to learn the mathematics. It is all a kind of a virtual reality that happens that black holes and wormholes and gravitational time dilation and you get basically wrong concept. So definitely this is absolutely not the right approach to learn general relativity. The second approach, which is this way, would be a pure mathematical approach. The thing is that it takes definitely more time. The subject knowledge would be, uh, should be required very good. And it is also not a good, uh, you know, approach for starters because it, it consumes a huge amount of time in learning the detailed mathematics and eventually you lose the interest. But yes, generally I would consider pure mathematical approach would be the right approach to take, at least not the intuitive approach. Now, in between the intuitive and the pure mathematical approach, there is something which is called the middle path, which takes a combination of both this. That means here we would be learning math mathematics, which becomes more clear. It is less arduous. It won't take that amount of time. It would take a kind of a moderate time and it is a linking towards the subject. That means you will learn the mathematics, not that much, but but it will link the subject so that you do not lose the interest. I would call this as a mathematically intuitive approach. That means you will do the mathematics, but not rigorously, yet you won't do an intuitive approach. And that would be the right kind of approach, a mathematically, but a kind of a intuitive approach, which is the middle path. Now, this would be the approach towards our learning and that is why I, I would be talking about the book. But the question is that why I am talking about this book, not the other uh, books which are available coming up into the next part of our video. So, uh, I have read quite a lot of books. I have made earlier videos also on learning the general resources, YouTube lectures, etc. But I have identified a kind of a problem with the books of general relativity. Now, if you see, these are very famous books starting from uh, Wald's book to uh, uh, Shaw M. Carroll's book, then Farooq Rahman, Taha Sochi's book, and here you see the famous Hartley and Schutz book, then P. T. Padmanabhan's book, and then Gravitational Cosmology by the famous Steven Weinberg and relativistic toolkit all these books are good i mean to say there's nothing wrong in all this book but all these books actually assumes you a lot of mathematics what is that let us see they assume that you know all those things differential calculus integral calculus multivariable calculus a lot of linear algebra tensor calculus differential geometry Curvature and tensor curve, uh, tensor calculus, Riemannian geometry, geodesic, Lagrangian formulation, Cauchy surfaces, and Rege calculus. 
and you understand that this is quite a very exhaustive lit and it will take almost not less than two to three years to at least master or not master at least get up to the intermediate level so that is the problem that when you start reading these books you should know at least some part of this so that is the problem and that is why we are not taking this approach we are taking a different kind of approach so the question is that if these books assume that you know all those and you really don't know which book to start with coming up into this part of the video okay so what i would be suggesting is this book general relativity without calculus and this is uh, by this gentleman jose natario and he is got i've given the details from the internet he is a full professor at university of lisbon uh, if you go through his profile you will understand he is basically a person or a professor into uh, general relativity gravitation uh, etc so this is the book i would be talking about in today's video general relativity without calculus so automatically you understand that you don't really need to know calculus because knowing calculus would create a lot of uh, internal complexities uh, jose natario's other publications i found these two introduction to mathematical relativity and introduction to riemannian geometry this is his profile in google scholar as you can see on the classification of asymptotic quasinomial frequencies uh, rap drive with zero expansion so he's quite a well known author and he has written these two publications and this would be the book that i would be talking about now the question is that why i am selecting this book you might have a question that what is so special uh, about this book only discard discarding or uh, not regarding the other books coming up into the next part of the video so what is so special of this book so the basic thing which i would like to uh, you know uh, show to you is the few lines that the author has written so this this course is intended to provide a quick but you see non trivial introduction to einstein general theory of relativity in which the beauty of the interplay between geometry and physics would be apparent given the audience there was the limitation uh, using only elementary mathematics and physics due to the time constraint and the text was deliberately driven in the abbreviated style so you see what is happening is that it will be a quick but a non trivial approach to relativity and this is most important only the more uh, kinematic aspects of relativity etc are dealt with etc so this would actually include a non trivial approach but a kind of a quick approach to relativity okay so here is also something important i therefore assume that the reader knows mathematics at the level of a student in the final year of secondary education elementary algebra is required geometry basic trigonometry essentials of sine cosine functions little mechanics uh, acceleration velocity force and energy and knowledge of calculus is not assumed the mathematics is sophisticated will be recognized etc so you see that integral and differential equations are not assumed in this book most importantly what you need to do is this one so from this what we can deduce is that we will have and will have not have difficulty to convert the corresponding approximate into rigorous proofs so from this statement what we can understand is that you see each chapter ends about 10 exercises and as you have i've been talking earlier in differential geometries that once you learn and do more exercises that exercises actually become uh, something uh, important and you learn it in a better manner so from this statement what we assume that this book assumes only basic mathematics trigonometry basic algebra and little bit of mechanics so you can understand very well that this is something which you have already learned and maybe you will be knowing more than this so if advanced concepts are not required also the knowledge of calculus is not required if you have it it is great i'm sure those who are watching the video already have calculus under their belt and you already know more than this but anyway this is the minimal approach so it is always good to go now having said that what this book assumes and what the author intends to treat this book as a non trivial approach but yet giving a very in depth uh, understanding of general relativity question is that how is the book arranged coming up into this part of our video so if you look into the arrangement of the book you will see first of all it will deal with special relativity obviously because without special relativity nothing is possible we won't be able to go through that then comes the minkowski geometry which is the foundation stone of uh, uh, general relativity then comes obviously the non euclidean geometry then the gravity part will come then the general theory of relativity and the schwarzschild solution which is very important and lastly touching base with cosmology so this is more or less uh, the way the book has been arranged 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah 
one, two, three, four, seven, seven important parts, and that is more or less the basic idea of generative interpretivity. Now the question comes: What is spoken in the book, and how the content looks like? Let us look into this part of our video. Okay, when I took a start with the content of the book, obviously I will start with special relativity. So you see, it starts with relativistic velocity addition formula. Then it speaks about the time dilation, and the author makes sure that no complex calculations are given. Yet you get a complete and a thorough understanding. As you understand that without the mathematical approach, general relativity all will be wrong. So that is why I selected this book. You see, then there are important formulas, and automatically there are certain exercises which makes the understanding much better. So, having said that, this is the, uh, the thing that they start with. Most of the books of general relativity assumes you know special relativity, so they directly jump into tensors or curvature, uh, cal cal curvature, etc. That makes again the learning much more difficult. So, we move on to the next. What is the the Minkowski geometry? These are the snapshots from the book which I have taken, and this is the generalized. Paradox, so it covers Minkowski geometry. Uh, further, it covers more about dimensions and how the light cones looks like, etc. And you see again at the end of each chapter, the important formulas have been summarized. We move on to the next page, which is called the non-Euclidean geometry. It starts you see you see beautifully, not going into complex mathematics, but it gives curvilinear coordinates. It makes you understand about geodesics. These are beautiful illustrations which talks about the spheres, etc., and curvatures. So non-Euclidean geometry is covered with ease, with some amount of mathematics, which is easy to learn. Next, uh, the author talks about gravity, which starts definitely with Newton's law, circular orbits, and then how. These calculations and everything happens. Then comes the central part, which is general theory of relativity. It starts with the equivalence principle, uh, and it uh, you know gives a detailed description of that. Then it uh, author speaks about gravitational redshift, the Einstein equation, etc. These are some of the space-time diagrams, which makes things easier. Then comes the Schwarzschild solution. Remember that. Uh, just understand that I am just showing snapshots because otherwise the video will be too long. However, uh, the book contains several other content. So you see, the Schwarzschild solution is given. The redshift, the space curvature, the black holes, all of this, but without using too much of difficult mathematics, yet giving you a flavor of mathematics that is important. We turn the page, and then we finally come to what is called the cosmology. Uh, in uh, here, it deals again with the redshift part, but in much more details, the Hubble law, and then comes the FLRW model. Uh, it speaks of the Hubble law in the FLRW model, the Friedman equations, and so on. So here are again the final uh, list of formulas which are important for cosmology. So in this way, the author completes the book. As you understand, I have not given every page; otherwise, the video will be too long. Now, if you want my honest review, I mean to say, what I think about this book, let us see in the next part of the video. So, if you talk of my honest review of these books, then I would say, first of all, the thing is that. It gives you a flavor of the real mathematics of general relativity because we understand that without mathematics, general relativity is absolutely not possible. But the question is that again, too much of mathematics will make things very complex. So this gives you the flavor of the real mathematics. Secondly, it overall touches the main idea of general relativity. I won't say it covers in depth, but it overall touches. So also, it is true that it is not a comprehensive book covering all the intricate details. That is true. And it is not a rigorous mathematical treatment which Steven Weinberg or Schultz or T. Padmanabhan does in his book. But again, as I told, this is a book for the beginners. So in order to just get a basic idea, yet not going too much into the mathematics of general relativity, this would be the ideal book. Because once you get a flavor of this book, then it is a good time that you go into further mathematics. Also, it opens your eyes to the mathematical venture. That means what is coming up in near future. Now you might uh, think that okay, no, this is not the kind of mathematics that I want. This is not my cup of tea. Fine, it is okay. Then you can sh shift to quantum mechanics or thermodynamics, something else. But in this precise, uh, you know, small period of time, you will at least come to know that this is the mathematics which you will come to deal with, but but with much more uh, complexities and integral and differential equations. So it gives you an open eyes, and you understand. A feel and get over feel over the subject. Definitely, you get a kind of an understanding, a feel that okay, this is what is coming up. If you like further, go ahead. No problem. You can go ahead and uh, do, take other books, and you can contact me also to learn more about the complexity.
it is. But this book at least give you a flavor, overall the idea, although it is not a rigorous mathematical treatment, it opens your eyes and make you understand that this is the kind of mathematics which will be uh, taken care and if you like then in future you can go ahead and select further difficult books or further I would say complex books which will uh, make things uh, in a, a much more matter, better manner. So this is basically my honest opinion. I won't say this is a uh, you know a, a absolutely a wonderful book or the absolute the right book to start with but yes I would say that this is the kind of a book which through which you can uh, get a kind of a flavor and understanding and that is very important. Okay, now having said the uh, review, the question is that how will you get this book? So, uh, this is how you get this book. It is very simple. All you need to do is to subscribe to my channel and you can email me or you can contact me over WhatsApp and what I will do is that I will share it in the Google Drive. But please do make sure that you watch this video and just mention about this video that you have watched so that it becomes easy for me to send that a book because I have been sending a lot of books and there are videos and I will be making more videos on several kinds of books so don't worry I will keep serving to you but make sure that you read uh, this video understand the difference and the intricacies of general relativity subscribe to my channel and then contact me I will be happy to help you so I am extremely thankful for those who have watched this video please do subscribe to my channel physics for students click on the bell icon to get all the notification from physics for students the same contact email ID is there and uh, you can subscribe to my this channel which is exclusive to general theory of relativity further you can contact me on my instagram facebook and linkedin uh, pages thank you for watching this video please do put up your comments and do let me know how do you like about this video physics for students will be soon back with more interesting video so stay stay tuned till then goodbye